So I've been playing this game called Bitburner. So it's it's essentially a programming game that teaches you actual programming um, in, uh, I guess, as used in the industry. Um, so this game is free on Steam. So if you're interested in, I guess, f you know, playing a, a programming game or practicing some JavaScript programming, this is probably the game for you. Um, so in this series, uh, my goal is to create a fully automated game. Um, so this game allows you to create uh, programs and then it's going to run when you're offline. So you don't actually have to, I guess, be in the game to make money. Um, so when you first start up the game, uh, it's going to, I guess, show you a, uh, a tutorial. Uh, I've done this many times, so I'm just going to skip it. Um, one thing I'd like to say mention is that this series isn't, I guess, like a guide on um, on programming. If you want to learn programming, go do some research. Um, but this is basically just a guide on, uh, I guess, uh, how to get started really quickly, and then how to automate um, majority of the stuff in uh, in your game. Um, so. Uh, without further ado, let's uh, let's get started. When you first start the game, all your stats are set to level one, um, and you also start off with one thousand um, dollars. What I like to do with that one thousand dollar is go to this hacknet uh, tab here, and then purchase a hacknet node. And what that that one will do is that it's going to give me some passive income as I'm uh, writing scripts and um, playing the game all right so that's done uh, let's go back to the terminal so your terminal terminal window is essentially your uh, gateway to i guess your your computer as well as the entire network um, you can create scripts you can uh, call commands so if i type in help it's going to show you a whole heap of commands um, but uh, Usually, whenever I start, um, you need to start with two scripts. So, first one is called uh, the Gimme Money script. So, what this script will do is that it's gonna uh, give you money. <laughs> That's it. It, it, it. It's pretty self-explanatory. So, I'm, I'm just gonna write it up and then explain explain what what it does afterwards. All right, cool. Um, we're back. So I created this "Give Me Money" script. Um, essentially, the first thing you need to note about, uh, I guess, creating script in this game is that it uses, uh, I guess, a library called NetScript. And NetScript is a just a custom, I guess, API that this game uses to interact with all the nodes within. Uh, the, within this game, the, the network of this game. Um, so what I did here is first I grab the target from <clears throat> from the list of arguments. So whenever we run the script, we can pass in some par extra parameters. Um, the reason why we do this is because this will the the target will change over time, and we don't want to reinstall, I guess, the script um, every time we want to run it. Um, the second thing is we specified the the security and money threshold. So every single server in this game has uh, a level of security, and uh, your effect the the effectiveness of your your hacks. So hacks is this one um, is when you steal money is determined by how low the security level is. And generally, um, what most uh, tutorials suggest is that you want to grab the the minimum level of the security of that server that you're targeting and then you increase it by five and that's probably the optimal uh, security threshold when you want to start hacking um, and then the second one is the money threshold so this one is essentially uh, the threshold where which indicates when you're gonna collect money um, so I just set it as I guess the servers max money and then multiplied by 0.75. So the, what this means is that it's 75% of the server's uh, maximum amount of cash. Um, down here is a, a loop. 
um, this one repeats over and over again and um, and then inside it has a bunch of conditions so uh, the first condition is if uh, I guess the, the current security level of the your target server is bigger than the security threshold then you want to weaken security so what this one will do is that it's going to decrease the server security uh, the second condition is that if the money in the target server is less than I guess 75 percent of its ma max money then you want to start growing it again so you want to pu put money uh, simulate putting money you're not actually putting money you're simulating putting money into the target server th so that you can collect it again um, and then lastly if uh, I guess any of those conditions uh, passes so the security is weak and then there's enough cash in the server then you you hack it so you steal money from it um, cool so that's the the gimme money uh, virus that we we created um, and then let's list that out so that that's one and then um, as you can see when when I press ls uh, there's a nuke.exe file here nuke is essentially the way that um, you gain root access to the servers in this node um, we don't really want to run this manually we want to run it via a program um, and we want we want to specify a way to automatically distribute I guess this gimme virus uh, gimme gimme money virus uh, over the network um, so how you do that is uh, we're gonna create an another script and I'm gonna call it auto deploy and what this uh, this auto deploy script does is that it's gonna automatically deploy uh, the gimme money virus throughout the network that you can access uh, so I, again I'm, I'm just gonna write it down and then explain what this uh, this script does all right cool I think we we finished we finished writing up uh, I guess this deploy script um, so before I go through the code um, I just want to first uh, go to the terminal and then I guess mention the concept of um, the the memory uh, like script uh, RAM script RAM so if you type in mem uh, mem auto deploy um, it's gonna give you a breakdown of I guess the the cost of your script towards your RAM and um, when you start out this game you start off with eight gigabytes of RAM so you need to make sure that your script is efficient enough um, to support uh, this amount of RAM um, so this auto deploy script here is uh, it uses some advanced concepts um, but essentially what it does is that it looks at your entire network uh, looks at every single uh, I guess potential targets so the ones that you can hack and then um, deploys the, the virus script to that and then runs it how you can read this uh, this deploy script is from uh, bottom to top. So the the ones above this are essentially either helper functions or just a bunch of variables. Um, so here in the main loop, you could see that this is what uh, it's running. So the first thing it does is that it grabs um, the the target servers. Uh, so what what are the potential targets that it um, we can hack? Um, if the new target's length um, is uh, is not equal to the current target's length, meaning that um, it found new targets, um, then it's going to deploy the hacks on those new targets, so the, the virus on those targets, um, and then reset the current targets to the new target so that in the next iteration um, it's gonna cur current targets will be the new targets and then we're, we can determine whether or not um, there's new uh, servers that it, it found um, and then uh, down here you need to sleep so um, if you don't have I guess this sleep command here this uh, while true statement will freeze your game um, so let's get a deep dive on, uh, I guess, how I retrieve these target servers. So up here um, is the target servers. So first I re retrieve all the, the, the nodes within the network. 
Um, this one uses a very advanced algorithm, uh, which I suggest you should probably look up. I'm not going to go in depth in explaining that. Um, but all it does, uh, this get network nodes, is that it grabs every single, uh, I guess, networks within, uh, like nodes or servers within your network. And then uh, down here, we then filter out those network nodes, so all the servers within your network, uh, to the ones that we can hack. So return not can hack. Um, and then down here, you then add, manually add the purchased servers, uh, mainly because the purchased servers are special. Um, you immediately gain uh, root access to them. So yeah. So let's do a deep dive on this can hack here. We can identify whether we can hack a server, whether um, we have the number of cracks. So cracks is uh, is, is my way of uh, mentioning the, I guess like the, the penetration scripts that we have um, is, oh wait, there's this a bug here. I'm gonna, just gonna fix this. So if we have more, um, penetration scripts than uh, the number of uh, required ports that the server needs to be able to gain root access then it means that we can hack it um, also we need to be able to support the um, the, the RAM that uh, our virus has so we get this virus RAM by typing in ns get script RAM and then the virus file so the, this is the file name um, all right, and then also the number of cracks here, so the number of penetration scripts um, is essentially defined by this. So we have, we created a map here, which maps the, the file name to the actual command, the, the penetration command that we have. Um, so in total, there's five uh, penetration scripts that you can unlock and you have to create them over time. Uh, but I, I just created them in advance so that we don't have to change this auto deploy script in the future uh, All we have to change is just basically just rerun it um, And then it just maps the file name to the actual function itself uh, And then when we retrieve it, we then uh, look at all the keys on that map So all the file names and then we check whether that file exists in the server And if it does, that's that's gonna return true and then uh, we grab the length of that. So uh, essentially this function looks at all the cracks and then returns the, <laughs> the amount of uh, penetration scripts that we have uh, in our server. All right, so this get, get network nodes. So I'm not gonna go in depth onto this, but essentially it uses a thing called depth, depth first search traversal. Um, and in high high level, um, essentially your network is organized in a graph, and uh, a depth first search is a way to I guess traverse that. So go through every single node within uh, that graph until it can't find any more neighbors. Um, it, it's definitely worth um, looking into a bunch of tutorials on uh, how this all works. Uh, but as of now, depth first search you probably need to google that um so up here is the copy and run virus so what this uh, function does is that it copies the virus over to your server and then if it doesn't have root access then it looks at the number of ports required to hack it and if um it has at least one required port to hack then we penetrate the server uh, so we hack it and then, um, so when, when we say we hack it, we open the ports and then we then nuke the server so we gain the root access. And from that, we can run scripts uh, if we want to. Um, and then down here is, uh, I guess, the, the check of whether or not the script is running. Um, so you, if a script is already running in your server, you can't rerun it. Uh, so it doesn't run over the top so you have to kill it first before you can run it so i added this check to just kill the, the virus if it's running so that it gets refreshed when it's getting deployed uh, down here is the maximum thread so what this one does is that it grabs the maximum ram that this server has 
and then divide it by the virus RAM. So and um, so what this does is that it grabs the maximum threads that can run your script. Um, and then we it has to be a whole number. So we grab math.floor and what math.floor does is that it if we get uh, a number like 2.4 or 2.5 it's going to return 2. If we get a number like 2.8 then we get the whole number 2. Um, we don't want to round it to the nearest decimal uh, mainly because uh, it's not it's it's not going to work <laughs> basically it's uh, it's not going to have enough memory to support, I guess, uh, the, the script. So that's why we have to round it to the, the, the lowest whole number. Um, and then we execute the script here. So we, we pass in the, the script name, so the virus, the server um, that we want to execute it in, the number of threads that we want to execute the, the script and then also we pass in the optional parameter of the target, which is uh, the target server that we want. So what, what this one will do is it's going to run that give me money script here. And then the target will be passed down here and then it's going to do its thing and give you money. Um, all right, moving above. Uh, so there's the, uh, I guess the last thing, the penetrate um, script here. And what this do does is that it looks at every single penetration scripts that you have in your home server. And then if it exists, then it runs that script on your target server. Um, that's about it. And then it's going to open the, the ports. Um, yeah, that's, that's essentially it in a nutshell. Um, so if we run this, uh, hopefully it runs the first time. So let's try run it. And uh, the first target what, that we're going to uh, aim for is the noodles server, mainly because that's the, I guess, the lowest tier server. And then eventually, once we get hacking level 10, uh, that's when we change up the, the target. Um, so I ran the server and it tells you that it targets all these servers, meaning that our gimme um, give me money script will run there um, you can actually see all your active scripts here um, so you could see here that in this server we're running the give me money script with the noodles parameter there and it's gonna run uh, over time um, you can actually connect to them so let's uh, try to connect to one of them um, so the game provides you with this command called scan analyze and essentially uh, scans your entire network um, and then yeah and then to connect to one of these servers so for example the noodle server we then type in the connect and the noodles and we type and then we're in and then if we type in ls you could see that the gimme money script is, is here and if we type in analyze um, you could see that we have root access to this um, yeah cool that's that's about it um, yeah so that's that's the first part and uh, I guess I'm just gonna leave the script running and wait f until I get hacking level 10 uh, and then I'm gonna show you what the next steps are